Fantasian is easily one of the most visually beautiful games I have played in a very long time, if not the most beautiful. Everything about this game reminds you of a JRPG of the 90s. With a nice modern flair here and there to help smooth over some of the classic annoyances people always complain about JRPGs. It's worth pointing out though that this is probably the last full game from Sakaguchi and Nobuo. But anyway, I'm Avignette and this is my review of Fantasian Part 1. Well, let's get started off with the gameplay. If you've ever played a mid to late 90s JRPG such as Final Fantasy 7 to 9, you'd be familiar with the format of this game. You play as a group of people focusing around the main character which is Leo. You travel around the world, town by town, dungeon by dungeon, with the occasional world map area depending on where you are. Where you encounter various NPCs that will progress the story in a rather linear fashion. There are the odd side quests scattered here and there, but they're rather a simple affair, but it has been promised that more open world side quests and story is coming in the second part, but for now it is very linear. The other half of the gameplay is via a battle system. This is your classic turn based affair where your party stands in a nice little neat line and takes turns beating up various enemies. What makes this slightly different from all JRPGs is that there are a greater number of enemies in these battles, normally layered so that all the enemies can't be attacked with just a normal attack. So you've got a front line, mid line, back line, or depending on what you're doing. You have abilities that can pierce through enemy lines or curl spells to hit multiple targets at once, which is nice. So because of this, combat is very focused on skills rather than standard attacks which adds an element of having to manage your mana as well as your HP, which is a welcome bonus really. Now before you ask, yes, the game is random battle based. For all you out there that don't like that sort of thing. But, hear me out. This game seems to have solved this issue somewhat by using an item called Diane Jun, assuming I pronounced that correctly, which traps enemies from random encounters so you can deal with them later all in one go. This makes dungeon exploring a little easier because you don't have to stop every few steps through a battle. My only complaint about the system is these battles, once triggered, can go on for a little while and are frankly rather boring due to the generic battlefield. And skills like this game's version of a limit break take far too long to charge up and don't carry over between battles, so they can't help you speed these up, which is a shame. Visually, this game looks phenomenal. The carefully crafted dioramas are just magical and a joy to look at. Some areas where the camera is zoomed in it can look pretty terrible, such as these flowers, but these issues are far and few between, so it doesn't really break the immersion. Running around the environment is an absolute joy with vast colour palettes and all these little details here and there are just amazing. The other odd effect because of this is how it looks. The game looks pre-rendered. Well, I suppose it technically is in a way, which brings back some of the magic of the late 90s JRPGs that real-time rendered 3D stuff cannot recreate in any way. Moving between scenes in this game is very similar to your old fixed camera games and JRPGs, like Resident Evil and things like that, but it's it slightly different with a camera pan, which frankly is very off-putting at first, but it does cause the classic problem where you can get stuck between two scenes when you're trying to move you're holding the analog stick left and you move to a new scene and that puts you back into the previous area and you just flip between them back and forth. I even found myself in some areas where it pans a lot that I found myself holding down right and I was actually still moving left for quite a long period of time until I let go of the analog stick for it to reset which was just a little odd. Now onto the 3D parts of the game. These are very simply designed but very well animated which lends itself well to low powered devices such as iPhones and iPads and that type of thing. Which is where this game is targeted let's be honest. Though I will say if you plan on running this on a Mac you will need, you will have some issues when you get on older Intel HD graphics in some areas. Though in battles, everything just looks lovely and smoothly, so there's no issues there. The game appears to have been built in Unity, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems to be the case. So things like anti-aliasing are rather lacking, but this is easy enough to solve by running the game in 4K and downscaling at 1080p for those smoother edges, if that's something that you like. But overall, graphically, it's absolutely a joy to look at. All aspects of it are just, just lovely. Now on to the music. What can I really say? The music's by Nebuo, and it's probably, possibly, his last full soundtrack. But it's amazing all the same. You might think at first it sounds very different from what he has done in the past. But if you listen and listen long enough, you can hear the classic signature parts of his style. So it's still present. Overall, I love the soundtrack. It has such a different feel to each area of the game, which is it was absolutely amazing. And overall, the jazzy tones and some parts are absolutely delightful. You got this bit where some trumpets are playing and various things. It, it's just great. If I had to sum up a sentence, I'd say it's a very fun soundtrack that fits the tone of each scene almost perfectly. But lastly, let's move on to the story. I don't want to talk too much about the story because it is a story based game. You should go and enjoy it yourself. But it is a very simple quest to begin with where Leo has lost his memory and with the aid of some new friends along the way, some of which he possibly knew before his memory loss, you go off in the quest to go and restore his memory and find his past. During this we have a good level of character development between all the present members. There's no party switching with this, it's all fixed party, but it's very linear at the moment so don't worry too much about that. And the main focus is really on Leo's memory. I suspect in part 2 the additional party members will have more stuff going on, but we'll have to wait and see. But without spoiling the overall plot, basically the world has been populated by these things called Mechateria, which is machine type pollution, which seems to turn the surrounding area into like half mechanical things, so it turns monsters into machines and generally affects the local population and infects stuff. There is also a recurring enemy called Van the Malevolent who pops up a few times to say hi and does a few things, but I won't go too much into him because that spoils the fun, doesn't it? Now, a slightly unique feature of the storytelling is the memory sequences in this game. They're not always memories, but it's a nice storytelling medium. If you've played Lost Odyssey or Terror Battle, you'd be familiar with them. This is a slightly more jazzed up version of it. You've got some nice imagery and the text pops and jumps in a little, a little bit more. If I wanted to dumb it down, it's basically a very nice slideshow with some animated text. But it's very enjoyable to read, so don't let that put you down. The rest of the story is presented via NPC dialogue or general story events, so that's all as expected. In conclusion, this is a very simple game, it has all the hallmarks of a stunning masterpiece of a JRPG, and it's only the first half of the game. It's a major shame that it's only on Apple Arcade on a subscription service of that, but overall, the game looks stunning sounds amazing, is a joy to play, and has a compelling story. So if you have access to an Apple device that supports Apple Arcade, and you love a good JRPG, go check it out, you would not be disappointed. My final thought is though, I do hope this comes to other platforms at some point, just for the simple reason that I'm concerned with it being trapped in Apple Arcade, to the point where the game would just disappear in a few years time, and something this amazing needs to be kept in a format that will still work in 20 plus years time. And that's all I have to say, so check out my playthrough of this game, link in the description below, and I'll see you when part 2 comes out. So, until then, goodbye, and have fun. Go pick it up. But, bye bye!